Hello friends, this is Diane Sylvan and I'm back again and in this video I wanted to give you a little tour of my altar. Uh, first we're going to look at uh, what it looked like before and you get to see me stripping it down which is a, a very important practice for me to strip down and rebuild my altar periodically. And then we'll put it back together and I'll tell you more about the different things that you'll see on it. And I hope that you enjoy this. I had a lot of fun making it, so let's go. Okay, so this is the third time I've tried to film this. The first time I did it like I wanted to do, where I was putting the altar back together, talking about each item as I put it where it goes, and for some reason, half of that video came back in slow-mo. I, I don't know why. I, I'm new at the whole video thing, but I, I still don't know how the hell that happened. And then the second time it didn't record at all. So this is attempt number three. And third time's the charm, maybe, maybe, okay. So, first, let me light my central candle because I like to have it lit. This is actually an arc lighter. I got it from Amazon and it charges with a little USB cord. And you just push the button and it sparks up. And I thought that was pretty cool. It's not perfect. Like you really have to hold it on the incense stick for a long time to get it to light, but it's still pretty handy to have. So first of all, we have the altar cloth here and I like to point this one out because my roommate made me this. She actually made me three of them in different fabrics that I ordered from Spoonflower. And I put this one on because we've got a full moon coming up and that felt appropriate. And it's reversible. Um, one of them has two different colors on the both sides, but this one is the same on either side. Reversible and washable and super cool. So my incense burner we have here, and it's just a little flower pot. Again, something my roommate gave me. I like to have a bunch of different sticks ready to go at any time. And I know what they all are. So like these two are sweet grass and this one is sage. And then these three are vanilla black myrrh. So if I just want a nice smell in my room as opposed to doing an actual ritual, I can light one of these guys whenever I feel like it. <clears throat> so going from the left to the right, first we have my little pomegranate box. This is meant to be a wedding favor. Um, they're given a lot as gifts in Turkey, I understand, but I just got this from Etsy as a great many of the things on my altar came from Etsy because Etsy is dangerous. But I'm a big lover of prayer beads and I have two sets. This one is for one aspect of my goddess, Persephone. And I bought this one as is, also from Etsy. <clears throat> and I keep it up here. And this other one on the other side is for the other aspect of my goddess, which I call Thea. And this one I made myself. It's blue kyanite and demortarite, and I just strung it up in a way that I thought worked well for me. And I keep it in this lovely little florite bowl that I've had since my mid-twenties. Now, as I am a Unitarian Universalist pagan, one of the important symbols for Yu Yu is the flaming chalice. It symbolizes both the light of reason and logic and the light of the spirit. And this little guy is the one that my church gave me when I joined. And it's just 
it's just lovely. I just love it. But then I thought maybe I would want a like slightly larger one. And I got this beautiful girl, also from Etsy. This is uh, Carnival Glass from the 70s, and it's meant to be a taper holder, but as you can see, it holds a tea light just fine. And I'm, I'm completely in love with this. I just, I love looking at it. It makes me happy. And I can't wait to see how it glows in dark. And around the base of it, I have little stones and castings from shells that I found at Barton Creek Green Belt. I also love to collect what I call weities. They're little bitty statues of all different kinds of goddesses and gods. Mostly I have goddesses, but I have this one tiny, tiny, tiny little Ganesh I'm very fond of. And then the rest on here, at least, are goddesses. We have a Sarasvati, the Hindu goddess of creativity. And then a green Tara, who is the Buddhist goddess. I guess you could call her a goddess. I don't know if they view her that way necessarily, but most people see her as a goddess of enacted compassion. You can see that her foot is sticking out. She's ready to get up and get up and do things. And I keep her here surrounded by stones and my little, a little tiger's eye kitty cat that's sort of a protection stone for my cat, Owen. And back here we have a figure from Ball Pine Art Farm, if I can get it out of, the, out of the lights here. And it's called Radiant Health. And it has a little divot where you can put an, an offering or oil. And I keep this little holy stone in it because I just think that it, it fits there so perfectly. So moving down this way, I have a spell bottle that I made for my birthday. And it was kind of a complicated thing, but it's it's a work in progress, so it stays there. And then the newest addition to my altar is this little lady. Um, I got her from, again, from my roommate. She used to be painted black with stars and had a spiral on her belly. And um, she was on my roommate's altar for a number of years and eventually came to me. And I asked if it was okay if I repainted her because she's just like white resin underneath. So I did sort of a galaxy type treatment. It didn't come out exactly like I wanted, but I, I really liked the end result. And um, I might have to redo her face. I'm not sure I like how it turned out, but for now at least she looks lovely back here. And then we have this, I guess more of a traditional pagan sort of chalice. That's, um, one that I got from my mother. It's part of a cordial set she got for her wedding. And I just think they're so elegant and beautiful, but I'm always paranoid about putting the whole set out because the decanter is really long and thin and tall and just looking at it, I'm afraid I'm gonna break it someday. So I just keep this, this one out here. I could drink out of it, but I'd have to wash it first. <clears throat> And down here we have some little anointing oils that I've purchased or made. Um, I used to make a lot of oils, but I haven't in quite a while, and I, most of my ingredients had gone rancid over the years, so I just bought these. This is the one that I used to anoint the surface of the altar here. It's called Star Daughter, and it's just kind of a nice light scent. It's not too perfumey. And then we have... I have quite a few carnelian stones. I love carnelian. I'm a big old Scorpio. And another weity. This one was hand carved from a piece of wood that a woman I met at a festival found in Colorado when she was on a camping trip. And I just, I love how she feels in my hand. I can put my thumb right here and she's really comforting to hold. And next to that, is this little wooden stand, which is actually just a piece of wood with a slit cut in it. I have three of these and I keep waffling whether to paint them or finish them or whether I just like the plain wood. But this one I keep my monthly oracle card in and this is the fox, which is from the Animal Allies Oracle Cards by Jessica Swift. Back in the back here, I've got an assortment of herbs. I used to have an entire apothecary cabinet, but now I just keep it kind of pared down. 
um, to the ones that I like using the best. And this is elderflower, and I have several others back here. Then I also have a jar of the redwood trees. When I was in California, I just fell absolutely in love with the giant redwoods. The coastal redwoods, and I, uh, I found some needles and a couple of pine cones and brought them home with me. They're not from a national park or anything like that. They're just off the ground. Since they're not supposed to do that. <laughs> and these little hands are holding a smoky quartz sphere. I also have a fluorite sphere somewhere in my rock collection. I, I've kind of stopped purchasing stones in the last couple of years because their mining and harvest is really ethically questionable. And it's hard to know exactly what you're getting and if it's real and what was involved in getting it to you. So for the most part, I just, I, I keep what I have and that's all I, that's all I really need anyway. The only thing I've bought in the last couple of years were the, the stones for these beads. And I got them from a shop on Etsy as well. And then down here we have this really cute little goddess bowl handmade and I will put links to the shops where I got as many things as I can remember some of this I've had so long I have no idea where it came from but I'll put links in the description area if you're interested in any of these makers or products these two stones I've had since I was I think 17 they were some of my very first purchases as a little baby witch I also have this little stone here, which says, so what? And it's a reminder from the Wellspring group that I'm in with my church that its whole purpose is exploring spiritual practice, which is kind of my jam. And at the end of every session, we ask, so what? Because everything that we've discussed and everything that we've learned is only as good as our ability to apply it to regular life. So this is a reminder that whatever happens here also needs to happen out there. That you have to work to enact your magic as much as you have to work to embody the person that you want to be in your meditations and your rituals. And then I have my current Tarot Love, which is the Light Seer's deck by Chris Ann. And I keep it here so I can get, get a hold of it pretty easily. This drawer, actually, I used to keep the tarot deck in a drawer, but when I've got stuff going on out here, this is really hard to get open and shut. So now I just use this for extra supplies, tea lights, stones, the other card holders and things like that. Big old quartz that I have no idea where I got it. It just seems like I've always had it. And then this is a box that I painted and it's all messed up because something got spilled over here at some point and I had to clean up a bunch of stuff, but this needs this needs a good, a good scrubbing. But it's basically just a charging box or a holding area for items that I'm using in workings. And I really like how it turned out, but I'm gonna need to clean it, so. Very sad. And of course, a little yoga frog because why not? I like to have all these wonderful little things to look at and my little mini deities and like this is a tiny 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 little brass Lakshmi who is the Hindu goddess of prosperity and good fortune. I call her my mini Shmi. But I just I love having little things to look at and pick up and touch and things I can hold and move around and as I've said the whole process of stripping down and then rebuilding my altar is a very important practice to me. I, I've been doing that as a meditative and ritual practice since, well, since I started. And since I live with so many animals, it's a good thing to do anyway, because you don't really want your altar to get all dusty and hairy and gross. Um, that just seems a little bit duh, disrespectful to me of all of the the energy that goes into this and whatever you may believe about spirits and elementals and gods and goddesses. 
you want your altar to be clean. I mean, that just seems like good advice across the board. And then around here, I have a variety of cards and goddess images. This was actually a scrapbook paper from one of those big pads like you get at Michael's. And I just thought it made an absolutely perfect backdrop. And then I have calendar pages, and I don't know if you can see it, but I have a, a painting that was done by a pig. It's a pig snout painting. And um, I, I really, really love pigs. And uh, they're one of the main reasons why I'm vegan. And I have this uh, little charm that came from England, I believe, and my friend Nan brought it to me, and it's been broken, and I repaired it with gold paint and in the Japanese tradition to symbolize becoming stronger in your broken places. And this, this little guy was originally meant to help me stay vegan, and I like to charge him up every month as I remember to. But yeah, that's really, that's pretty much the tour. Um, I have my little fairy lights around, and they're on a little battery right here, so I can turn them on and off, and they put out a lot of light, and I have, like I said, extra supplies in here, then down below I have my basket with all my incense, and another bowl with most of my stones, and a big old jar with tea lights, so that I don't have to go hunting for them all over the house when I run out. But I, I really love this setup. This was originally a, a, a folding writing desk that I got from Target. And it's kind of a concession to middle age because I used to use my grandmother's piano bench, which had the legs sawed off so it was at a good sitting height. And I loved it, and I still do, but I have bad knees and I have a bad back and this floor is incredibly hard. So finally I just said, you know what? We're gonna get something we can sit at. So I hunted and hunted and hunted and I found this beauty on target.com back when the uh, pandemic started. And I just, I really enjoyed it and it works out really well and I can roll my, my desk chair to and from whenever I need to. So that is my altar and I, I hope you enjoyed this tour and I really hope this time it came out because if I have to do it again, I may scream. But I will see you for our next video, and go ahead and like and subscribe if you are so inclined. I appreciate you coming to see me and coming to see my little sacred space, and have a wonderful day, and I will see you soon.